Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to the Steel Monotype run of EV Emerald. Last time was basically just filler. But this time we start things off strong with one of the most infamous rival battles in the series. The second mandatory rival battle in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Can be absolutely brutal, especially if you're a speedrunner. Most speedrunners are only going to bother with training their starter, and that's pretty much always Mudkip. This usually doesn't leave you in a very good position to deal with your rival starter. The only thing I did off-screen was that I went back to the Pokemon Center to, well, restore my power points, not that it really mattered a whole lot. Oh, this is... The problem is Shroomish is just so obnoxious with its insistence on just paralyzing me right off the bat. And, yep, here comes Combuskin. I think I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and take a chance on giving her a free hit. Because I do not want to risk getting parahaxed into oblivion. Don't. Okay. That eh, wasn't so bad. Okay, come on. Hit yourself. Hit yourself. Come on. Do it. Do it. Oh. Okay, be that way. All right. That's out of the way, so it should be all downhill from here. Having all those extra levels really came in handy. But I'm not going to take any chances, because, well, Aron's not going to have a good time against Wilmer. I'll just heal. So, see any reason to get cocky now. To quote the announcer from the first Pokemon Stadium game, What's the point of splashing? No, seriously, what's the point? Why does Wilmer learn Splash? At least in Magikarp's case, it's kind of... That's kind of the point. It's meant to be a joke. Eh, whatever. And we finally get a fourth attack, Scary Face. Which, uh... Situationally, that could be helpful, but I'm not expecting it to be very useful. We'll just use Metal Claw. Why not? And there goes the battle. Yeah, that wasn't too difficult, because I was fairly over-leveled. If I was on level with my Pokémon level 20, that could have been dicey. And here we get the most useful key item in the entire game. Yeah, here's the problem. Your rival doesn't follow their own advice. They're the ones that ends up slacking later on. In fact, in in vanilla Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, your rival never fully evolves their starter, which is really frustrating because it means you can't, you often can't get, well, you can't get all the species in the Hoenn deck seen without trading. Eh, we'll swap off. Granted, up ahead are a couple of double battles, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's see if I got it, if there's anything I missed. Nope. And there's a Great Ball. There's another item as, as well, between these two. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Here, I was just gonna knock it out because, well, if it's faster than me, I'm not guaranteed to be able to run anyway. Eh. 
Oh well, still a one-hit kill. Alright. Okay, so of course we have a guitarist and we have a collector. Collectors in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald are usually going to be using version-exclusive Pokémon from Ruby or Sapphire, often both. Okay, we're actually gonna we're gonna gang up on Electrike. I just don't want it to have a chance to paralyze me. That and I find it's usually, when you have double battles like this against two trainers, I tend to prefer to knock one trainer out first. So that way it very quickly ends up a two-on-one battle, makes things a lot easier. Butt Slap isn't going to be able to cut it, thanks to Growl, so we'll just use Headbutt. I don't know if I needed that crit, but we take those. Mm, that could hurt. Oh, never mind, because it's steel type, it's not super effective. Thank you! Correct me if I'm wrong, I think Nuzleaf might be a dark type. I'm not going to use Confusion. He'll just be immune. Again, don't think that was necessary, but we take those. And a reward for beating them is a revive. Fair enough. I don't think you can even buy those at this point in the game, so that can be useful. Just knock it out. Well, I'm getting a lot of crits this time. I really hope that means the fight with Watson isn't going to be really, really annoying. Because Watson can be annoying. Unless you had the foresight to get yourself, say, well, unless you picked Mudkip as your starter and evolved it in the Marsh Stop, in which case Watson's basically free. Or failing that, eh, you get a Geodude in uh, Granite Cave. Even better if you evolve it in the Graveler. Again, it's basically a free, it's a free gym badge at that point. But I don't have access to ground types because, uh, well. In Gen 3, there was only one Steel and Ground type, and that was Steelix. I have had yet to find an Onyx in this hack, so... Well, I can't use that. If I did find an Onyx, then I absolutely would have it on the team, because then all I'd need to do to get a Metal Coat to evolve it... Well, actually, take it back. I don't know how this hack changed Steelix's evolutionary parameters. I do know that some other Pokemon are changed. Like, for example, in my test playthrough, I had a I had a Golem on my team. It evolved from Graveler at level 36. Normally, it's a trade evolution. I think that Abra's the first time you encounter something that uses Hidden Power. Yet another crit! Hmm. And here's an... 
Sorry for the awkward cut there. Just Bandicam being Bandicam. Uh, so yeah, we got an elixir. I pronounce elixir or elixir. I forget. It's not a word you hear all that often, so. I might hold on to a dire hit. I do use those occasionally. And we get a Pokeball. I think that's the last of the hidden items that doesn't require things like Surf. And... Here's a Fisherman. We're gonna switch off to Matang again, because... I know at least... I think at least one of his Pokemon is Water-type attacks. I don't want to just... let Aron get drowned. Again, what's the point of splashing? Now, funnily enough, I will actually need to catch a Whalmer later. Not to use directly on the team. But because to get access to Registeel, which is a Pokemon I want to use, I will need to get access to a Whale Lord and a Relicanth. That could take a little while. Especially the Relicanth. Relicanth is very, very rare. Whereas Whalmer, once you have a Super Rod, it's not hard to get. It just takes a bit of patience. Of course, because this is a monotype, I can't level it up in... Well, I can't attack with it in battle, I guess I could say. So what I'll probably do with that one is I'll put it in the daycare to gain some levels there, and then I'll withdraw it once it once I only need it to level up once. And I'll... Maybe I'll use it to double battles or something using non-attacking moves until it levels up again and evolves. Here we are in Model City. And we also see why I bought that harbor mail. We talk to this girl. And if you have harbor mail, she gives you the coin case. Because, uh, yeah, unlike in the modern Pokemon games, you can gamble in the older ones. Then the EU decide that we just can't have nice things. Damn Europeans. Go in here, and here is. Well, this guy gives you Rock Smash, which you'll need the uh, third badge to be able to use. The next thing we grab is. Bike. Now, in this game, you get the choice of two different bikes, and if you want to get one or the other, you have to come back here and swap it out. Of the two bikes, now, you have the options are either the mock bike, which lets you move really fast, lets you go up slippery slopes and cross crumbling tiles, or the acro bike, which lets you jump up and down certain obstacles. Of the two, the mock bike, I think, is more useful. The acro bike, you only needed a couple of different points. Let me check how much money I have real quick. Mm, nowhere near enough. I was thinking, if I had enough money, I might buy a TM at the uh, game corner. Of course, it's very expensive to get TMs that way, but it also lets you get access to some very powerful moves a lot earlier than you would be able to otherwise. And over here on this side, this guy. Uh, so, his, uh, 
The guy changes every time you mix records with another player. Sometimes they'll trade you different secret base decorations, or they'll sing you a song, or they'll tell you a stupid story like that. And of course, here's the game core. Um, we're not going to play any games, I'm just going to show you something. So, this girl normally would give you a doll of whatever starter you picked, but because I picked Eevee... It just locks her to a dialogue loop, so you have to say no. What a shame. And the last thing we'll do, before wrapping this up, is we will take on Wally. This guy really thinks he's ready to take on Watson. You poor bastard. Yeah. A Ralts. And he wants to take on Watson. With that. Sure, great idea, kid. Yeah. Keep in mind that Curlia, the Pokemon it evolves into, isn't particularly powerful either. In fact, I think it's one of the weakest Psychic types there are, but... The one saving grace is that it only takes another ten levels to evolve it into one of the strongest Psychic types. Gardevoir. Of course, most people know of Gardevoir for an entirely different reason, and that's all we're going to say on the matter. Now, this is interesting, because Takedown... Let me think. Because with Rockhead, I won't take any recoil damage, but on the other hand... 90 versus 70 with a 15% chance to miss? Nah, it's not worth it. If I teach you another move right right away, it might just be Rock Tomb. I might, I might not. I'm not sure if I'll teach it that. The ability to slow things down is a bit nice, but it can also miss. Yeah, Feebas, one of the rarest Pokémon in the game. Where the hell did you get that, you lucky son of a bitch? Yeah, you lost. Mm hmm And this won't be the last we'll see of that kid. Anyway, I think this will wrap it up. Or, well, we'll listen to Scott. And that's not the last we'll be seeing of him, either. Okay, now we'll wrap this up. So, uh, if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rumble page, and I will see you all next time.